thank you for joining us. We're here at the Mid-South Reading and Writing Conference in Birmingham, Alabama, and I'm here today with Dr. Bob Boardman. Thank you for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Um, what are you talking about here at this conference? Well, I did my, I shared today favorite books, my new favorite read-alouds, and then tomorrow I'm working on talking about uh, multi-genre text sets with primary, intermediate, middle school kids, and taking a social studies concept and a science concept to show how taking a variety of perspectives to talk about concepts that you need to teach, but taking different kinds of genres to utilize helps kids comprehend and learn more than they would by just taking a textbook. Great, I saw some of your lists over there. Um, how did you come up with some of the titles that you're using? Same way everybody comes up with titles. I, I'm a bookaholic, so I can't go by a bookstore without having a quick run through to see what's new there. Um, when I'm when I'm organizing to do things with teachers or take on a task that I hadn't done before, I'm particularly thoughtful about what I want to do. So I talk to my friends who love books, like Reba and Lester and other people, to find out what books that they know of and can use, and and then I just go out and find them on my own, particularly multi-genre is fun because then I get to go beyond books and so um, in, my, in my work with particularly earth sciences for instance, um, I went and to AAA and got maps of Arizona and I got brochures of the Grand Canyon and all kinds of interesting information. I got to go to the, to the, to the University Rock and Fossil Museum and get information and, and, and brochures all kinds of different way things uh, that have text for kids mm -hmm. to get information from that are more than just boring reading out of the textbook. Um, what benefits are you seeing from using multi-genre in classrooms? Um, well, I, the issue is not enough teachers utilize it. Teachers tend to go, have um, st standards in science that they want to teach or in social studies, but they tend to utilize their textbook or some basic uh, other materials, but they don't think about going beyond a textbook. And so just going on the internet, you can find so many things to use in terms of you can find poetry, just Google. Uh, go all you have to do Google is poem and a content area uh, or, or a specific thing in science or social studies, and you'll come up with half a dozen poems on a subject. So that's a way to get poetry quickly. And, um, and then just going to finding various kinds of things to make kids more interested and engaged um, gives a chance for kids who don't, who kind of get bored and don't want to even try reading a textbook or, or it looks like, oh, I don't want to read that, but it looks something, oh, maybe I'd like to do that. And, and it's real print, so it's functional print. And, and functional print is something we don't spend enough time on in school. But in real life, outside of school, most of the reading you do is functional print and expository text. And so it's fun to be able to get kids to look at that this is, if you're going to Grand Canyon, this is information that you would get. And somebody had to write this. And they had purpose and thinking of an audience, just like when you're writing a story in Writer's Workshop, you're thinking of your purpose and audience. They had to do it too. So what's your favorite picture book right Oh. <laughs> and I was talking to you earlier about that too. It's really hard to say my your favorite picture book right now because I have so many old old favorites. And I was talking to you. In my family, I read every Christmas the How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and and all my my nieces and nephews are all in their thirties now, and they have their own kids. So I still and they still beg me to come and bring it to read on Christmas Day. So if I, I if I was stand, stranded on a desert island with people, that would be one book I'd have. Um, and the other book, anything by Cynthia Ryland, to be honest with you, anything she's written, and anything illustrated by Peter Catalanato, and because they're just such a great writing team. So an angel for for Solomon Singer is like my one of my top fav five favorite books in the world. But um, but right now it's hard to come up with because I shared all these books today. But um, what was that book? The the parody. Um, Giving tree, the taking the tree. Taking tree. Oh my God! Tree. You can't read it to kids because it's it's kind of really an odd take. But if you're teaching parody to middle school and high schoolers, it's a great take. Particularly if you didn't like the giving tree. And the interesting thing is, every time you come up with a book you love, you find out there's someone who doesn't like that book because people have tastes in books, and that's the interesting thing about 
about coming to, to coming to conferences, I get to see other people responding to books that I didn't respond well to, like Amoeba's, today I went to Reba's presentation on read alouds I had three of the 15 books on that page, and three of the books on that page I never would have picked up on my own. Like the one she shared about the daddies, I just looked at the cover and saw the title and the name of the person, and of course the author, Bouchard, writes for Native American mm -hmm. novel, he writes novels for Native American adolescents, and I thought, you know, just, so it, it didn't really engage me, but then when she shared it, it was like, now I have to have it. Mm -hmm. And I know at least three other teachers who will beg me to have it if I share it with them. So that's the thing, when you love books and you connect with people who love books, you get, you get to, you learn a lot more yourself. So I just try to keep connecting with people who love books, and so my books will change continually. Um, where can we see you next? Well, where I'm going to be next is actually I'm going to be probably working as a reading coach on the in the MS Pueblo um, a day school, which is a, a, on the MS Pueblo in New Mexico between Albuquerque and and uh, Santa Fe, which will be great fun. I've been there a little bit before, but um, I'm do some pre I teach at the University of Arizona, so you'll te see me in classes on Monday evenings <laughs> and Wednesday mornings teaching reading classes, and uh, and then I'm doing some work actually in a Regio school, with uh, K a K-5 Regio school in Tucson, helping utilize uh, literacy in new and different ways to document kids' learning and document, have teachers engage kids in their inquiry projects, reading and writing, and, mm, and meshing in as many new book titles as they can. Oh, thanks for coming. Oh, my today. pleasure, as okay. always, and you as always.